<laughs> hey, John Clements here. I'm out in the UMass Orchard. I'll make sure I remember to speak up so hopefully you can hear this. I thought this might be a good idea. It's a foggy afternoon here. Uh, the temperature is about 39 degrees. And uh, like I said, I'm out in the UMass Orchard and I'm in my our block of NC 140, the 2014 Honeycrisp planting. I'm not sure what you mean by what was that, but uh, the scream, that's the orchard crew up pruning trees. I didn't know they were up there today, but they are apparently. So anyways, quickly, I'm going to try and run through these trees, do a little pruning, tell you what they are, uh, and what I think about them. I don't see too many people here yet, so I wait, just wait a second. But part of the reason I decided to do this is it's not windy. And uh, how many times is it not windy in the in the winter? Um, oh, that's Erica. I assume she meant the scream up on the hill. All right, let's let's get going here. We'll see if people come in. Our first our first rootstock is Geneva 202. Here it's a smaller tree. I was just asked by somebody about 202. Um, and I thought it was pretty good, but it, it seems to be it depends who you talk to and where it's grown but Anyways, this tree is definitely smaller than I, I'd like to look at. I also wanted to show you these uh, New electric pruners I got um, Comoc uh, just shy of $300 on Amazon. I think they're a pretty good deal Let's See if they work here it Takes a lot of the work less work out of pruning them so with this tall spindle system, the first thing we're going to do is cut a few of the biggest branches out. So I've got a big branch over here. I'm going to cut this one out. I'm going to cut this one out. I'm going to leave a stub. I don't like this low branch anymore, so I'm going to cut this one off flush and hopefully not cut the wire. Now I want to point out that these wires are about two feet apart, and I probably really only want about uh, four fruiting pieces between these wires. So I got one, two, I got a big branch over three here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I really got too many still. So I'm gonna, using a stub cut, cut this branch off over here. I think I'm even gonna get rid of this. Did a, a stub cut here last year and it came in nice. I've got a new branch growing. All right, I'm probably good down here. Moving up to this, I got one, two, three, four. I got a few too many. I'm gonna cut off some of these bigger ones. Too many, I think I got too much fruit in there. And there. And the top of this tree is in pretty good shape. Uh, I can actually reach the whole thing to get it pruned. That's done. All right, the next tree. Quite a bit bigger. This is Geneva 214. Uh, you know, actually, at this three-foot spacing, it looks pretty good as long as I get rid of some of the big branches here. And if I go down to four branches between my two-foot spacing of wires, I've got one, two, three, four. I got about six. Well, I'm going to start. I, I got. It's time to get rid of these bigger branches here. So I'm done. I don't like this down here, but uh, well, we go it out of there. All right. Same story here. I, I really only want four or five branches. I've got twice that many. So I'm going to start cutting out some of these bigger branches. Um, maybe back to some smaller wood here and there. Uh, I like that, but it's time to go. And I've got one over here. i got to keep the big branches out of these trees, especially as we get into the more vigorous Geneva rootstocks. And I can reach this one up here. Can you see that? <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to go too overboard, but uh, you know, I, I got to get the bud count down on these trees, and I've got to keep some light coming down here to get some light on this new growth. Now, as far as the top goes, my pole pruner, I want to shorten this up a little bit. I'm going to take a couple of the bigger branches out of here. I don't know if you can see the top. Yeah, you can. There you go. Shorten that a little bit. Here kind of a big branch over here. All right, um, still a few too many branches maybe, I don't know. Get the bud count down. 
because these are all different. I can't count every one, but there we go. I like that one. All right. Let's look at the next one. See if this is working. Then I'll have to move the, the camera probably. This is Geneva 30. Now, Geneva 30 is kind of a bigger tree. I've liked it in this planting though. The fruit quality is really good, but you know, it's probably definitely got to start to get the bigger branches out of here. Um, because big branches make big trees, right? So some of this is just too vigorous. I got to get the branch count down um, between my two foot wires here. I've got to get the bud count down. I'm not counting buds because all these root stocks are different. Um, flattening these branches out a little bit. All right, moving into the top of the tree, I got uh, too many branches here. You know, this pruning is really so easy. Now, I prune these trees from day one, so they're pretty easy, but it's really just getting the big wood, out, the bigger wood out of here. Um, a little trimming back. I don't like this branch over here, but oh well. This one's kind of big, but I'll leave that to fruit another year. What do you think? Dave, my target bud count, because all these trees are different. This Geneva 30 rootstock is a little bigger than the 214. They're all going to be different. They're not the same trees, but I would say I'm going to want um, 60 to 80 apples on each of these trees. So if I 1.5 times that, 90 to 120 buds, probably still got too many. Might want to cut some of this weaker wood out here. Might cut some of this back up here to uh, get it a little flatter. I could uh, take a few buds off down here to bring this tree down. So like I said, I'm not really counting all the buds here. Now, I don't want to run out of juice on my phone. Uh, let's move to the next tree. I can probably do that one without using the tripod. This one's Geneva 11. Coma. Do we sound like an advertisement? They're, they're sending me a free, uh, free set of uh, uh, blades if I advertise them. <laughs> All right. Can you see this? I've got, again, my bigger branches. I've got too many branches making stub cuts in here. Get rid of the bigger branches first. Leave a little shoot if I can. Boy, it doesn't get any easier. All right, I got a really big branch down here, which is kind of low on the other side. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna get rid of that entirely. Still probably got a few too many buds for this size tree. This would definitely be no more than 60 apples or so. Might just do a little bit more bud removal. Uh, what do you think? Can you see that? Done. Wow, this is too easy. See those four trees? All done. All right, let's let's go to the next group. I like not having to win. How's the volume? Can you hear me? Hi, Lisa. It's a it's it's a, a Chinese Comac I bought it on Amazon. Two hundred eighty eight dollars. I don't think it's too bad. You know, I used to use loppers, but I'll I'll never go back. All right. What's my next? I did this tree, can you, it's this one right here. This is Geneva 41, that's kind of the gold standard now. Right here, yep, Geneva 41. Kind of the gold standard now for uh, Honeycrisp. Um, make sure the trees are supported good because it's had some problems with breakage. All right, biggest branches, leaving a stub. One, two. Three, four, 
it's got a lot of a lot of buds on it. I can tell you that right now. I've got an offending branch on this next tree, which I'm going to get rid of entirely. I'm not really fond of this long, skinny stuff. You can't see it probably, but I got a branch over here that I think I'm just going to stub back to there for now. All right, I got some new growth coming in where I made subcuts last year. Uh, too many, too many buds. I can just tell I don't have to count. Too many buds. I'm going to take some off. Uh, hmm. All right. Getting there. Uh, I should look at the top here. Get my pole pruner. You know, I, I, I you can't see this now, but I got to cut a little bit out of the top of that tree. Um, you know, where am I? Oh, this is the one I'm doing. <laughs> um, just cut a little. I've got too much wood up there. Too many buds, I can lighten the bud load a little bit. Get rid of some of the uh, smaller, weaker wood in here. But height-wise, trees are fine. All right, next. Can you see that okay? Dormant hedging prior to manual pruning. That's Mario, David. I, <laughs> you've got to... You gotta do the dormant hedging to set the box, but you know what? I don't know. I'm a firm, a firm believer in this tall spindle. You know, hedging may be appropriate for, wow, why does that branch look so big? Is that the branch? Huh. Maybe appropriate for larger orchards, but for our smaller uh, tall spindle orchards, I don't think so. All right, bigger branches come out right away. I just cut that back a little bit. A bigger branch here. We got a bigger branch up here. A bigger branch here. I know I got to reduce the bud load on these trees, so that's the fastest, quickest way to do it is to get rid of some of the older, bigger fruiting branches. I know this looks terrible on the camera, but uh, it really grew nice last year. I think I'm going to leave that there to fruit. I don't know. What do you think? And then I just got to do a little bit of work up here. Reduce my bud load a little bit, I think. Um, cut some of this weaker wood back. Get rid of some buds. And I'm probably about where I want to be. This branch looks so terrible because you're kind of seeing the trunk too. It's not as bad as it looks. I don't like it in the top. I don't like it. It's going to go and maybe grow a new one there. All right. Happy with that one. Okay. Chris, I take that means you can hear me okay. Next, M9. You know, M9 on Honeycrisp, don't do it. You got the Geneva rootstocks that don't get fire blight. Well, they're more resistant to fire blight. Um, M9 has not done all that well in here. So again, I, gotta, I think there's way too many fruit buds. I expect most of these to be flower buds. We had a fairly light crop last year. Um, can't see the other side of the tree, but I just got a couple bigger branches. Notice I'm leaving fairly long stubs. What is it, a four finger rule? Three fingers in my case is three or four. To get some new growth there. Oh, the bottom of this tree is, is fine. Just touch up the top a little bit. Um, it's a little floppy in there, so I'm gonna. I don't mind flop and crop, but then when it's flopped and cropped, it's time to cut it back. To a weaker upright shoot. I'm not too crazy about this over here. I think there's still maybe too many buds on this tree, but that's gonna do it. This back maybe. Done. You see that okay? Is that tree right there? Uh, I'm gonna move the camera now. Peepers, the peanut gallery is pretty quiet. It's okay. Let's see, it's hard for me to tell exactly. Okay, now I got a crab apple buried in there, but this tree right here all right, is, ooh, the label's buried. I can't see what it is. Hold on. Oh, that's an M26. 
you know, this tree's not bad. I, I see, I, again, don't do it. Um, this is too low. Um, let's get rid of some bigger branches in here and grow some new wood. You know, can you see that? A cut, a bevel cut was made. Cut was made here last year and only one shoot went straight up. Oh my goodness, I don't know. I hate that. I hate that when that happens. Uh, the branch over here, this is my crab apple in the way, so I'm gonna just clean this up a little bit. Uh, get rid of some of this weaker drooping wood. The top is fine. I got a big branch over here. I'm gonna cut out. And get, this is going down. Boy, wow, that's a pretty bad looking tree. You know, we didn't have much branching over here, but that's all right. It'll regrow. <laughs> all right, what's next? Ooh. You see that honker? Just what it is. You see what it is? It's big. This is Geneva 890. Now, if you want a freestanding, more of a semi dwarf, dwarf Geneva rootstock for Honeycrisp, it's, it's, Really good. It's a little too tight for this spacing. Although some people swear you could keep it in place by taking out the big branches. So I'm gonna start doing that. It'll take a little more work. Um, but it may just be a little bit too tight. There's a lot of big branches in here I think that need to come out now. It may just be a little bit too tight. I may simplify a couple bigger branches so I don't cut them all out. For this spacing, but I tell you, the fruit, the, the Honeycrisp apples on this 890 have been pretty, pretty nice. I'm not, I'm gonna avoid cutting it too hard so I don't, <laughs> I don't make it too vigorous. Um, they start having to reach. And, be careful, but all right. You know, if I think if we keep the branch sizes down, to like less than a dime in diameter. See, make live with it. Now, let me grab my pole pruner. Let me see if we can crank up the top here so you can see that's getting way too high. What am I gonna do? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Try. Um, I think I'm gonna cut it back to right here if I can. Yeah, I don't like that though. Even no, it broke off up here, which doesn't bother me too much. That was a terribly unclean cut. But now I want to take this whole thing off because I hate I hate dirty cuts. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna get it with this door. I'm gonna kill myself for making another dirty cut. Uh, well, at least I've got some shoots up there to take up some of that vigor. That's probably the biggest downside of dealing with these more vigorous rootstocks is tree height. It's a bit of a mess, but it'll work. Now I'm gonna leave a bunch of stuff up there to soak up some energy. Yeah, I got a, I got some stuff over here that I don't really like. It. You can't see it, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on it. All right. Next is a nine nine sixty nine Geneva nine six nine, which is kind of a a new favorite of the. Cornell Geneva program, it's okay. Um, it's got some good vigor. Time to get rid of some bigger branches. You see that? Oh, definitely. One over there's gotta go. Actually, this one's gotta go. Ah, uh, this has gotta go. This has gotta go. I'm, I'm cutting these back to little spurs. Uh, this one's probably gotta go. Simplify that a little bit. Probably not going to do much with the top. Ooh. You know? <laughs> done. At least in my opinion, it's done. All right, I got four more trees to do, if you can bear with me. Maybe we can get them all in the same shot. The problem with these four... I should have done the top there a little bit. Let's go do the top. Can you see that? 
Can you see the top of that Geneva 969 there in the background? I'm just going to shorten it a little bit. Just cut back to a side shoot here. Ah, perfect. All right. These trees were planted in 2014, so they're eighth, eight, eight years old, eighth leaf. All right. We got the president of the IFTA watching, so that's really great. <laughs> she can report me as an errant uh, person. All right. So part of the reason this planting was put in was for these vineland rootstocks. Um, Vineland, uh, the Vineland rootstocks are out of Ontario. John Klein up there wanted to test them. Um, you know, they've done quite well here, but they're a little too big. There's four of them. Yeah, the tag's gone there. There's V6, V1, and V7. So therefore, this one would be V5. Now, they have not been as productive in general as the Geneva rootstocks. But they're not bad. Um, this this V5 is a little big. Anyway, it needs some work. It's got to get. I got. I've probably been pretty lame about getting the big branches out of here. I've been trying to get a lot of yield. It's time to really buckle down, I think, and get rid of these bigger branches, or I'm going to be in big trouble. Here's a big one over here. This thing is a quarter size diameter. Got some real big ones on the other side of the tree too, but before I get to those, using some four finger cuts, get some of that out up there. Um, at this point, I don't think these these are even available, uh, but who knows what's gonna happen. I gotta get rid of that one over there. Normally when I prune these tall spindles, I just go up one side of the row and down the other. All right. Um, Seems I cut quite a bit out there. I'm gonna get my pole pruner and do the top. It's getting too tall and I've got some big branches up there. I think you can see them. Uh, where I'm gonna start, just getting rid of some of these big branches up here. And I think, you know what? If I do that, wow, that was too easy. Should have spoke here soon. Wow. Well, oh, what do you think? Can you see it? It's not bad. This one is V6. That was V5. This one's V6. Now it's this one's even more vigorous. No, Trevor, I want to reduce the bud load in there. Plus, Trevor, I can't. I got to get rid of these big branches now. Maybe I should have cut a few more off initially, but I can't let these big branches stay in the tree. And I don't have to worry about making money because I'm just a researcher. So here we go, big branches out of here this year. Um, leave that one with some fruit on it. That's got to come out. Okay. You can't see the other side probably very well, but there's a bigger branch over here. Yes, Trevor, I know I'm taking out too much. I don't know. That's what the that's what the grower always says. But if I take out more, it's I'm doing my I'm doing some thinning now. Okay. Oh, can you see the top? Sorry. Yeah, I guess you can see most of it. Obviously getting too high. I can cut that out. I can cut this back to here. I can get rid of some of some. More than some. This is too big, way too big. That's got to come out. That's got to come out. Getting there. If I simplify this branch right here, I think I'll leave it for another year. Otherwise, Trevor will yell at me for taking out too many. Hmm. You know what's interesting? Even this, even this big, bigger rootstock stuff, if you keep cutting out the big branches, I think I can manage it. Almost done. How we doing? Totally agree, but you were giving Mo so <laughs> I give Mo lots of I give Mo lots of crap. We both fish it out pretty good. 
Uh, I'm not going to dwell on this one too much longer because I don't want it to go too wild. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, maybe, Lisa. I don't know. Good point. <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? Um, you all can see the chat. That's a, that's a concern, but boy. You gotta, I think we got other, other ways to fix the bitter pit problem. We're working on it here, okay? Why is my tripod going crooked? There we go. That's a little better. All right. These two are interesting. This is, uh, I got V1 and V7 which are definitely more manageable, but I've got some bigger branches here, so it's gotta come out. So, you want me to take less branches out? I don't know, I could, but I can't. It's really time to get rid of some of these bigger branches. Okay, probably that's good enough. Let's grab my pole pruner. Do the top. You know, I haven't done much pruning yet this winter. I don't know. I don't like that. But. Get rid of this one. My height's good. I might just cut it back to that little weak shoot there. Bang, done. Yeah, maybe I left a few more buds for you. How's that sound? This is V7. I, I know the V1 was commercially available. V3 is the most commonly Vineland rootstock available. Um, that's a bigger tree. V1 is smaller. And you can see it's not bad in here. All right. Last one is V7, which also looks pretty good. You know, if you go to our NC140 website, nc140.org, you should be able to look up some of the yield data. All right, so what do we got going here? Well, I don't, this is kind of low. Um, got a big branch over here. We're going to go off with a four finger cut. Got a bigger branch in here, which is kind of buried. We're going to cut off with a four finger cut. I got a few bigger branches. I'm going to cut back to a weaker lateral, maybe get rid of a little upright wood. I got some very weak, weak wood in here. This I definitely need to reduce the bud load. I don't know if you can see it. I got a branch over here. Let me move it. Yeah. We got a branch over here. That's kind of tough. Back, but leave, leave some apples on that for Lisa's benefit. Okay, come back, come back. Wow, I got way too much fruit up here. Way too, much. way too many buds. I think I'm trying to take off about a third of the buds with my pruning. Maybe a little more. All right, I think that one's done, except for the top. I'm just going to shorten that top a little bit. Now, there's 14 different rootstocks. There's 10 replications looking down the row. Um, see those? Let me switch the camera around and we'll... Uh, We'll review what we just did here. Do, 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 do. Get my. We got V7, except for the Aaron, Aaron branch on the left, doesn't look too bad. V5, yeah, I left too many br big branches in the bottom and now I've had to cut them all off. And maybe a few, too, a little bit too much wood in the top. This was V6, I believe. I shouldn't move around too much. Too big. It's a little bit too big. I don't think it's been particularly yield efficient. And this, I said, was V5. Again, a little too big. I liked V1. I like V7. This was 969. I've liked 969. Um, I noticed the, the fruit color. Yes, I probably am. I... I, I'm a long pruning freak, so I, I'm going to leave this and just let it fruit up and become like this. I could cut it back, but I don't like doing that. I don't know why I don't like those cuts. I like 969. 
I like A90. It's had really nice, highly colored apples. I don't like the way I butchered the top, but that is what it is. I remember what this is. This is 26, I think. Yeah, don't plant. Don't plant Honeycrisp on 26. Plant Honeycrisp on Geneva rootstocks. Or Bud 9 or Bud 10. Probably not Bud 9. M9, nope. 935. Make sure you get but certified virus free cyan wood for that though because there's been some issues otherwise it's a good rootstock geneva 41. boy i left some space in there didn't i <laughs> maybe i could be doing super spindle geneva 11. a little smaller than 41. well i should plant these trees two feet apart if you're going to do these plant them two feet apart Geneva 30, I kind of like that. If I can keep it in its all spindle space, the, the fruit's just been nicely colored. It's also been the most, one of the most yield efficient and has produced the most fruit. Um, it does root sucker quite a bit. Can you see those? And 214 is one that they've recently introduced and it looks pretty good. Yeah, maybe I cut too much branches off, you know. <laughs> I'll take it easier on the rest. And this is 202, which I think there's something wrong with the 202s in this planting. Um, either they're not 202s or there's just something wrong. So there's the rest that I have to do, but I won't, uh, I won't bore you with all those. But you know what? Really easy pruning. Um, these are three feet apart. I don't really care what rootstock it is, even the more vigorous ones I can deal with for sure. All right. With that, I'm going to sign off, everybody. Any any questions? Comments? Not really, huh? Okay, well, thanks for coming. Kind of short notice. I just decided to do this because it was no wind and um, I was getting stir-crazy doing office work. Take it easy. I'll put this on YouTube, too, so you can leave comments there if you want. I love comments, good or bad, indifferent. I don't care. <laughs> Have a good afternoon. Bye.